the pool. Dave gets everything that I've dedicated my entire life. I never thought I'd oh, see the day. Yes. Yeah. Right, is everybody prepared? Does everyone know what they're doing this afternoon? How on earth has it come to this? The hallowed home of George Pudding, now a place for the great unwashed to wed. I mean, are this couple even familiar with Pudding? Well, never... who knows, Peter, but they're paying us, and that's the main thing. So, Alan... How's the hall looking? Nearly there. Just got to put the last of the decorations up and maybe stick a few more buckets out for the leaking roof. Now, talking... Mm -hmm. Lovely. Maureen, have you finished the cake? Wedding cake's in the oven. I got the buffet out on the tables last night. Very prepared. OK, uh, well, you might want to cover that. We are still three hours away. Julian, are you sure you're happy to play the organ in the ceremony? I mean, most of my clever motifs and improvised passages will go straight over their clueless little heads, but, yes, great to finally have my first gig. Yeah, no improvising, Julian. I just need you to bash out the wedding march, OK? Any messing and we play it off the CD. <laughs> I think I know what to do. What am I doing again, Tom? Actually, you have the most important job of all, Peter. I'm going to need you to stay in your office and keep an eye on these bags of confetti. Maybe I should keep them in the gift shop. I mean, while I'm very much against this wedding taking place, it also doesn't seem fair keeping me from the ceremony. Locked upstairs with such a simple task, while Julian gets to show off his organ to everyone. Look, it's taken me months to persuade a journalist from your wedding today to come and write an article about us. One great review and loads more wedding bookings will flood in, bringing us some much-needed cash. And then can we fix the roof? And then we can fix the roof, Alan. And pay for a team day out. We Yeah, maybe t pay for a team day out, Julian. And build an extension on well, the... Well, no, we're not building an extension on the gift shop, Maureen. Wait, wait! Has anybody seen the bags of confetti? I had my eye on them just a second ago. They're behind you, Peter. They're right there. Ah. Oh. Perhaps this is a trickier task than I at first anticipated. Right. Now let's make this the greatest wedding in the history Guys, of... I think the wedding's off. You're joking. No. I don't know why I bother. Plum House by Ben Cottam and Paul McKenna. Episode 6. Wedding Bells. What do you mean, the wedding's off? Well, the groom's cancelled. But, but I've bought the sheet music for the wedding march online and everything. I was, I was going to learn it this morning. You haven't even learnt it yet. I've made 150 cheesy pineapple sticks. I've just bought a new bucket. It's red. I've spent all morning keeping a close eye on this... Com uh, uh, wait, where is it? It's behind you, Peter. Oh, God, this is a disaster. How dare this Joe fellow just ring up and cancel on the day of his wedding when we're all counting on him? I can't exactly make him go through with it out of embarrassment, can I, Julian? Well, that's what my wife and I did, and we've been happy ever since. Uh, hiya. Um, is there anyone there? Hello. <laughs> hiya. It's, um, it's Sophie from the magazine. Oh, yes, we'll be with you uh, in just one second, so make yourself comfortable. Okay. Let's just pretend that everything is going to plan until we can think of a better idea. So, uh, Emma, you show Sophie around. Mm. I'm going to call Joe, try and get him to change his mind, OK? Yep, OK. <laughs> Everyone act normal. Yep. Normal. Great. Oh, uh, and be nice to the journalist. Hello, hello. Hiya. Are they at Cream Hall? Uh, Tom! Uh, actually, I need to talk to you about something else as well. As I mean, that. yeah, now's not a great time, Emma, but, look, I promise we'll get round. Hello! Hello Hi, there. Yeah. Well, you must be Sophie from the yeah. Bridal Magazine. Hi, yeah. Great, great. Um, this is Emma. Hello. Uh, she's going to give you the grand tour of the old, uh, the old plum house, and I've just got a couple of errands to see. I see you. Why is he running? Oh, um, he is very dedicated, so he runs everywhere. Shall I show you the hall? Come on, come on, come on. Hello. Uh, hello. Is that Joe? It's Tom Collier from Plum House. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh... I'm so sorry just to cancel on you. It's just all a right mess. No, you know, not at all. That's... We completely understand. But, you know, it's not too late to change your mind back again. We're still ready and raring to go if you and Louise do want to get married today. It's not happening, I'm afraid, mate. I see. I finally, finally realised that I'm in love with someone else. Yeah, probably best you don't get married today, then. I think I've known deep down, like, for, for like, ages that I love this other girl, but I've just been... Too much of a coward, you know, just to, like... Just to tell her how I feel. Yeah, uh, I know that feeling, Joe. It's time for me to put my heart on the line. You know what? Like, who cares what other people think? Yeah, Joe, well, good for you, Joe. Yeah, I don't, I don't care what society says anymore, cos I'm in love. Hey, you go and tell her how you feel, Joe, before it's too late, all right? Don't let her get away. Yeah, so what if we're related? It's not illegal. Might want to double-check that before you... Cos they're only cousins, Tom. And, and So what if she works with Louise? Right? And I, and I work for her dad. OK, me, Joe. And she's got three kids, right. two, two of my best mates. But I don't care anymore, Tom. I'd probably sleep on that, Joe. It's been a long day, hasn't it, you oh, know, before you do thanks, anything? Thanks, mate. It's, uh, you've really helped me clear my head a bit. I've just seen things a bit more clearly. So, but, but again, 
Sorry for, for cancelling, like. Okay, yeah. Bye, Joe. Bugger. Funnily enough, writing for magazines was always something that interested me as well. Mm, yeah, a lot of people say that. And it must be great watching all those people getting married, getting to see their special day. Oh, yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, who wants to be a serious news journalist anyway? <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm living the dream. Anyway, so... This is the first wedding you posted at Plum House? Right. Well, um, yes, we offer a full complimentary service. Okay. When you hire the location, we mm -hmm. also provide the catering, the music, mm -hmm. a bridal suite. And here we have the Grand Hall, where the ceremony will be taking place. Decorated by our very own handyman, Alan. Up that ladder there. Hiya. Uh, hiya. Oh, yes, it's, uh, it's very... Christmassy. I had to use whatever I could find lying around, so I brought the Christmas box down. What are these smelly table decorations? Are they lumps of sherbet? They're powdered urinal cakes. It's lovely, isn't it? Sorry? I couldn't find any pot purry. <laughs> he's joking. He's just... He's got a very dry sense of humour, does our Alan. Why don't you just carry on through there to the gift shop and you'll get to meet our master baker, Maureen. Where are you going? I shall have a quick word with Tom, but I will be back before you know it. Peter, is everything all right in there? Is this one of those do not disturb moments? Only I don't want to just barge in again and find you... You know, I think we both regretted that decision. Oh, God, the smoke, Peter. The smoke coming under the door. I'm, I'm coming in. I'm coming in, Peter. This, this is your three-second warning. Put it, put it all away. Ah. Oh, hello, Julian. I wish you'd knock, old chap, especially after last time. I thought we said something about a three-second warning. Yes, I, uh, I'm sorry. What are you doing, Peter? What does it look like I'm doing? Well, it looks like you're swinging around a tea strainer full of burning joysticks while wearing a tea cosy on your head. Precisely. I got bored of looking after those bags of confetti, so I thought I'd act as backup priest instead, in case the registrar doesn't make it to the ceremony. And then I had a brainwave. My priest should come from the noble Eastern Orthodox tradition. So these are my temporary vestments. This is my thurible... Knock, knock. This is your three-second warning, Peter. Right, I'm coming in. Ah. Uh, why are you wearing a tea cosy on your head, Peter? Well, as you can see, I've decided... Actually, I don't to... want to know. Look, there's enough to worry about already. I I've just spoken to Joe. Uh, the wedding is definitely off. Oh, God. So what are we going to do now? I don't know, Julian. Uh, I just don't know. <sighs> well, at least you don't have to keep an eye on those bags of confetti anymore, Peter. Ah, that is good to hear. I lost them some time ago. I dearly do this several hours after baking. Oh, yes, dearly, because we've all got several hours to wait to ice a cake. Actually, she probably has. Not on telly much now, is she? Oh, hiya. I'm Sophie. I'm with the bridal magazine. I was just wondering if I could... Oh, yes, come in, love. Make yourself at home. I'm just in the middle of icing the cake. All oh, right. OK. Um, oh, I've never actually seen anyone do it with a silicon gun before. Well, I lost my icing pipe. I'm just using this old thing of Alan's. It's very similar, really, mm. although it's quite hard to do the lettering. Congratulations, Joe and... L Louise. The cake's still a bit warm, so it's melting. Mm, but there's actually an eye in Louise. You've just written louse. Anything else you want to criticise? Why is there a cement mixer in here? I mean, are, are there bits of cake in it? My food processor's broken. Is this a kitchen or a builder's yard, love? Right. I think it's time you and your fat ass were leaving. <laughs> No bride, no groom, no wedding. Well, we're going to have to come clean. No, 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 no. Wait a moment, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on a second. Um, 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 and that's it, that's it, yes. There was a fascinating article in yesterday's Telegraph. Ah, that's where that confetti went. Anyway, here we are. Yes, Peter, we don't really have time for this. Yeah, no, yes, 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 found it. Elton John, handsome chap. Yes, quite the heartbreaker by the look of it. Sorry, Peter, are you just going to read us an article about Elton John? Here. Elton John, who then wed his partner David Furnish shortly after same-sex marriage was legalised in 2014... You see? See what, Peter? It would appear that men can now get married to each other. I know, I thought it was a mistake as well. But the Telegraph are never, ever wrong. Peter... I mean, it's the most logical solution to our predicament. We simply put on a fake wedding of our own. One in which I marry you. Tom, 
To fool the journalists, mostly. Right, Peter, that is one of the worst... That's a brilliant idea. Brilliant. Believe me, I'm not keen on this either, Thomas, but desperate times call for desperate measures. I'm not going to marry you, Peter. Oh, come on, Tom. I think we can all agree Peter's cracked it. I mean, a lovely photo on the cover of the two of you kissing. I would definitely get a few copies. Yeah, well, it's not happening. What would I say to the journalist? Oh, sorry, we actually invented that other couple just to get you here because, in fact, I'm the one getting married to another member of staff. I mean... Of course, marriage isn't to be entered into lightly. One needs to have the right sort of attitude. That's another thing. I mean, you're already married, Peter. Well, I can keep a secret if you can. To be fair, Peter, bigamy is a crime. I think you can go to jail for it. I might be a pretty boy, but I can handle myself. Thank you very much, Julian. Gosh, unless they all come for me at once, the jailbirds and the screws. We're not faking a wedding, Peter, and that's final. <laughs> and it's one of the most preposterous ideas I've actually heard in my entire life. Suppose son. you could fake marry Emma instead, Tom? Well, I mean, that, that's actually... Yeah, that's a different sort of... Ca- me marry Emma. Oh, that's a, that's a thought. <laughs> I know it's a bit far-fetched. What do you think, Peter? Oh, so, sorry, sorry, Julian. Still just thinking through what would happen to me in prison. Imagine the scene that lights out. Peter's in his gym jams, then... You know, I, for the good of uh, Plummer House, you know, maybe I, maybe I can take one for the team. <clears throat> just this once, you know. Tom. Oh, no time like the present. Emma, will you marry me? What? Today's strange enough, Tom, without... Oh, no, not for real. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, no, no. But, uh, but you know, I mean, if, if the real bride and groom don't want to get married, it's just an idea that Plum House can put on a fake wedding. Um, the journalists won't know the difference. I've thrown myself into the ring, Emma, believe me, but there are concerns around bigamy. Peter, unless I was to dress as a lady. Where would that leave us, legally? Emma, what do you say? You and me getting married? Like, not for real, obviously, I said that, but saving the day for Plum House. Yeah, fine. Great, brilliant. That's what great. are you going to tell the journalists? No, I'll, I'll think of something. Only there's also quite a delicate matter I need to talk to you about, mm. Tom, and it's, it's rather Yeah, right, urgent. great. Everybody, we've got an hour and a half to stay to the greatest fake wedding Plum House mm. has ever seen. Tom, can we have that chat, please? Would you like me to do a wedding mass for you in Georgia? No, thank you, Peter. If you have to officiate at my wedding, can you please do it normally? Well, at least you get speaking parts. I'm just stuck behind the keyboard the whole time. Oh, unless I'm also Tom's best man. (laughs) That's a terrible idea. Tom won't like that. Come on, I've got loads of good stories about Tom. Have you? No, not really. He's incredibly dull. But don't panic. I'll just find some good jokes online. Alan? 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 I'm just up the ladder. (laughs) We've run out of Christmas stuff, but I found the golden jubilee box. OK, well, get down from the ladder. I I need you to go to the bridal shop in town. What? I I need you to buy a wedding dress for Emma uh, and a suit for me. Hold on. Hold on. Um, I, I don't know anything about dresses, and I've never bought a suit. I just wear the one we buried my granddad in. Alan, I am sorry, but I need you to go now. The cheapest ones you can find. I, it, take my credit card. Credit card? Just, this, yeah, just come on, come on, come on. OK, Tom, I'm going, I'm going. Good See stuff. you later, you can trust me. I know, Alan, good, good. Hang on a second, Alan, how, how do you wear the suit you buried your granddad in? Excuse me. Oh, hello, sorry. Sorry, I didn't realise... Uh, Actually, I've been meaning to talk to you about something, Sophie. A bit of a strange one, this. But I've what... just been verbally abused by one of your staff members. Ah, no. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, which one? Maureen, in the kitchen, said I only work for a bridal magazine to try and pick up men at weddings. Well, I promise you, I'm going to go talk to her right now. Please don't let that ruin your review. Yeah, of... well, you claim to provide a full professional service, but, I mean, it's hardly... Oh, we do, we do know. It's just, um, <laughs> God, there's actually uh, another reason why everyone's so determined for today to go well. Yeah, go on. Well, uh... We're all like a family here at Plum House, you know, one big <laughs> happy family. And I, uh, we actually have a, a little surprise for you. You see, it turns out I'm the one who's getting married today. You? You're getting married? Yep. <laughs> uh, who to? Uh, Emma, the uh, female. Uh, she gave you the tour. Oh, right, I see. Yeah, so sorry we kept that a secret from you. But, uh, yeah, we just thought you might not come and review us if you knew it was two staff members from the actual venue getting married, I mean. <laughs> well, no, this is actually better. Is it? Is well, it? yeah, my editor's been after a workplace wedding feature for ages. This is much more interesting. I mean, not to me, but to some people. There's even a chance I could get you guys on the cover with this one. Hey, fantastic. Who are Joe and Louise, then? Uh, I don't... The names it? that were on the wedding cake? Yes, the, uh that is mine and Emma's pet names for each other. Oh, right. Yeah. To be completely honest, I knew something weren't quite right. Really? Did you? What, what do you mean? Well, you know, where are all your guests? Shouldn't they be arriving by now? Oh, the guests, yes. Well, I'm sure they'll be here any minute. You know, all of our families and our many, many joint friends. I sh- Ooh, I should get this. Sorry, Sophie. 
Oh, probably one of the guests now. <laughs> just give me a minute. I'll just I'll take this into the other room. Hello, Tom here. Although people also call me Joe sometimes. That's something. Uh, Tom speaking. Hello. Sorry, Joe, is that you? Uh, I'm afraid this isn't Joe. This is Tanya calling from the British Museum. So, from the where? The British Museum. It's a very big building in London. Sorry, no, I, so I do know what the British... Me you just told me a bit by surprise there. <laughs> uh, I was wondering whether you had time to discuss your colleague, Emma Hughes. Emma? So, no, I'm a bit confused. Sorry, what's this about? Sorry, maybe there's been a mix-up in communication. I'm from the HR department at the British Museum. Emma's applied for a job in London with us. Between you and I, she's basically a shoe in but we just need to check her references. So do you have five seconds to chat? Emma's moving to London? I just can't believe she'd leave like oh, that. Oh, cutting in and out, Tom. This reception's terrible. I was just asking, what's Emma like to work with? Uh, well, I mean... You know, Emma's... I mean, Emma's... She's difficult. Um, sorry? Yeah, Emma's awful, in truth. She, she's nasty. She, she bullies the other members of staff. Is that so? Uh, and talk about lazy. Boy, oh boy, do you know, laziest worker I've ever met. And a bit racist. Racist? OK, that's maybe not racist, but she, she's generally not very nice and you should stay well clear. D don't employ her. Just, uh, just forget about her. Stop contacting her, I think. I see. OK, well, no, hope that was helpful. All right. Uh, bye, then. Bye. Who was that, Tom? Oh, bloody hell, Emma, don't do that. Who was that on the phone? What? Why? W were you expecting a call? I feel like there's something you should be getting off your chest, is there? Look, Tom, I've been trying to get you alone all day because there's something I need to tell you. And I don't know how to say it, but my friend James works at the British Museum and he's put me up for this job there and... And you've given me as a reference. So that was them? Yes, yeah. And did you say nice things? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. I don't even know if I want the job yet, but it just seemed like too good an opportunity to not at least apply for it, and... Sorry, but I thought you were happy here, Emma. I am. Well, I mean, it would be nice if Peter remembered my name now and again, but... I just... I thought that, you know, we got on really well, and... Tom, you know I think the world of you, but I can't keep my life on hold for one good mate, can I? I know, but what if we were, you know... Tom, is there something you're trying to say to me? Yes, Emma, there is. I, uh... I can never quite find the right thing is... We just need to find some guests for this wedding. Right. Yeah, we've only got an hour. Uh, we need to fill this room with bums on seats. I have no idea where you're going to find a crowd of people at such short notice. <sighs> Don't worry, I've got an idea. Tom, you bloody coward. <laughs> Thanks again to everyone for coming today. It's been an emotional event. Even the cake's in tears. I'll pause for laughter there. Yeah, that, mm, very good. Good, good, Julian, good. Um, make sure you enunciate. Project yourself out into the audience. Do this with your mouth. Ooh. Like the lollipop's really too big for your mouth. Uh, OK, right. You seem a little nervous, Julian. Now, just imagine the entire audience are completely naked. I mean, imagine I'm naked now. Does that help? Uh, not really. Knock, knock. Oh, yeah. I was just wondering if anyone could spare five minutes for a chat. Uh, I'm, in fact, in the middle of helping Julian rehearse his best man's speech. Oh, great. Now, I was just looking to get some background information on Tom and Emma for the article. So you're the best man? Uh, I am, yes. Oh, do you mind speaking into this? No, no, not at all. So fine. Thank fine. you. Uh, what is he like, then, as a friend and as a work colleague? Well, oh, no. Uh... It's all right. Mm. Certainly wouldn't have him on my own list of top ten best friends. Uh, right. That list would probably go, uh, you know, Hobbsy, Gareth, mm. John, Tim, Chris. Uh, have, I, uh, have I said Gareth? S sorry, it's Peter, isn't it? Yes, yes. Peter Knight, curator of this fine museum. Yeah. Um, I, I was just... Is that a tea cosy on your head? Ah, well, it turns out I will now also be officiating at today's ceremony. Oh, uh, are these your guests arriving? They look a bit old. I mean, proper old. Aren't they surprised they're still alive? Yeah, maybe we should find you a seat downstairs. We'll probably be starting soon. Oh, Maureen, not so rough. Oh, stop mourning, you big girl. Hasn't anybody done your hair before? Yeah, they're just usually a bit more gentle. Well, I don't have time to be gentle. You're getting married in half an hour. Everyone's already sat down. Although, where did they get them guests from? I think I saw my great-aunt Mavis in there and we all thought she'd died ten years ago. We had a party from a local old people's charity due to visit next week, so I just brought their trip forward. You know, our pensioners love a wedding. Hi, uh... Oh, here he is. About time. Now, hand over that dress. Sorry I took so long. There was a lot of mud on the road and so I had to drive across the fields. Well, who'd have thought it? Is that 
actually gorgeous. Yeah, perhaps in the 80s. Those shoulder pads are a bit retro. You don't like it? Oh, no, it's lovely. Are you all right, though, Alan? You look worried. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just I've never been in the ladies' toilets before. Who cleans them, then? Nobody. Mm, that explains a lot. I just didn't want anyone to think I was one of those men who go wandering in on ladies in the bathroom. Can't you just clean them when everyone's gone home? But what if there was a woman in there who'd fainted and she woke up and she found me in the female toilets? Oh, no, it's not right. So it's better to leave her in here unconscious and lock her in the museum overnight? That's why I never lock the doors, just in case. Now, how does our blushing bride look, Alan? What do you reckon? Oh, yes, very nice, oh. I think, probably. I'm not really sure. I don't really know what a woman's hair should look like. Does she look good, Maureen? <sighs> she looks fan-dabby dorsey. And you want to enjoy today, missus, as this might be the only wedding you ever have. Thank you, Maureen. Right, come on, Alan. Let's get some front-row seats. <sighs> James! How's it going? I heard your HR person called Tom earlier... He said what? <laughs> no, just sit down, please, sir. Would you... Where's the toilet? Yeah, we're just about to start, sir. So if you can just look for a seat at the back. And we just... Hello, Sophie. Hiya. Um, yeah, do please sit down, Grandad. I am so glad okay. that you could come. <laughs> you, you, you what? <laughs> so, uh, where do you want me? The best man's meant to show people to their seats, but he seems to be rehearsing his music instead. Maybe sort it reading it. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry about our little misunderstanding before. It's all right. And weddings are quite good places to pick up single men. Maybe you should try it yourself. A cheeky mare. Oh, my goodness, what are we doing? Th this is madness. Get a grip, Tom. You'll give the game away if you start panicking. It's just, I'm, just, I'm so nervous. How, how does my hair look, Maureen? Does, 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 does the bald bit's all right, isn't it? You're not getting married for real. Peter, what the... It's my dressing gown, only on back to front. I was convinced I had some real ecclesiastical robes somewhere about the place, but rather like that confetti, I seem to... Have... Emma's on her way. Oh. Tom, in position. <laughs> Julian! Faster, Julian, look at the speed of her. Emma, you look amazing. Oh. Thanks for the reference, Tom. Oh. <laughs> Emma, wait, I'm sorry. We, we're getting married. This whole thing is a sham. All right, it's over, Tom. I'm leaving. Ugh! Emma, Emma, I, mean, I can explain. <laughs> <laughs> teething troubles, ladies and gentlemen, teething troubles. Um, how about in the interim, I treat you to a little bit of the divine liturgy of St. John Chrysostom. <laughs> I'm afraid it's going to be one of those days. Julian, time for plan B. Right oh Peter. Sorry, I Emma! 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 Look, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. How could you do it, Tom? I mean, how could you do that? Honestly, I think there's been some misunderstanding. It, it wasn't that bad a reference. You huh? told the British Museum I was a racist. I... No, well, I took that back almost immediately. And it, what I was trying to do was... What I, were you trying to do, Tom? I was trying to keep you at Plum House. <laughs> right. My dream job... Emma, and I'm you... in love with you. Alan, 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 Alan leave those chairs where they are, will you? Where, where's everyone going? The old folk have got to get home. We're past their bedtime. It's quarter past four. I haven't even given my best man speech yet. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please stay where you are. I know Tom... Obviously didn't get married, but, uh, well, I've written a best man speech and it'll be a shame for all that to go to waste. So, <clears throat> uh, dependable, reliable, stylish, despite costing considerably more than the Volkswagen Caddy, the Fiat Ducatos. Oh, oh, wait a minute, that's my best van speech. Ooh, tough crowd. Oh, come on, this is good stuff. Uh, the, uh, wait, Maureen, I'm, uh, Maureen, I'm, Maureen, get off, Maureen. Stop it. Can everyone please eat some more wedding cake before they go? I know I like to over-cater, but this is ridiculous. And yes, I have heard that it's caused one or two of you denture wearers some problems, but our caretaker, Alan, has got his um, chainsaw on the job as we speak. Who would like their cake cutting up first? Did you really think I didn't know that, Tom? Do you think that I'm stupid? Do you think I can't see what's right in front of me? 
Curry Night and Film Night and, and the Murder Mystery Night and the Queers and that compilation CD I found. And, you know, oh, Emma, I think I need a special hand with this project. No, I mean, sometimes I, I do need a special hand with the projects. I mean, you're the only one here I can rely on. Then why treat me like I'm an idiot? Well, I don't treat you like you're an idiot. You're a good guy, Tom. All right? I like you a lot. You're clever and funny sometimes and you're kind and but you know what we're not at school i'm a grown woman and all this pussyfooting around i don't know if you think it's endearing but it's not if you do love me like me why haven't you shown me i mean where's the action tom why oh god i'm sorry do it again hey look at that two outside Proper snogging, is that? Oh, it's not for me, that. Oh, I think I'll close my eyes until it's over. Oh, fair play, Tom. Never thought he had it in him. I don't believe it. I simply don't believe it. What's the matter with you? I can't help feeling it should have been me out there. Getting off with Tom? Oh, not, not kissing him, just getting married to him. It was a fake wedding, Peter. Yes, of course. I know that. That journalist soon scarper, didn't she? Didn't even stop for cake. Well, not that she needed any. She said she was going to call the story Workplace Fail, jilted at the altar by my colleague, and try and sell it to a different magazine. Anyway, never mind. I think we did a great job today, all of us. You know what? We did. Thank you, Maureen. Now we'll just go around with the Hoover and some bin bags, and everything will be back to normal. Ah, uh, try as you like. There'll never be a normal day at Plum House. You can depend on it. Have they finished yet? Oh, get them eyes on you. You've still got to finish cutting up the wedding cake. That's going straight in the gift shop. The fudge has finally had it. OK, I promise, all right? From here on, no more film nights where I'm too scared to put my arm around you on that little sofa. <sighs> and no more curry nights where I'm just hoping we touch hands over the poppadoms. I promise, no more... And Tom, there aren't going to be any more film nights or curry nights, thankfully. You know, I put that dance sack in the bin when your back was turned. Really? Well, I mean, we, we can just chill or something, you know. We... I'm going to London, Tom. I got the job. No, but my reference... It was so bad, they just... I thought you were joking. What, you're really leaving? Yeah. I'm off. Plum House was written by Ben Cottam and Paul McKenna. It starred Simon Callow, Jane Horrocks and Miles Jopp, with Tom Bell, Piers Quigley and Louise Ford. Sophie was played by Joe Enright, and other parts were played by Nico Tatarovic and Maya Sondi. It was produced by Sarah Cartwright and directed by Paul Schlesinger. It was a hat-trick production for BBC Radio 4.